In the last video I was attempting a first start, however, I ran into a lot of problems because of my obsession with trying to make the fuel pump look original by having a glass bowl on the bottom of the pump. I ordered a fuel pump from Rock Auto and it probably would have worked, however I took it apart and removed the bottom cover and replaced it with the glass bowl that I had. So I eventually took it apart more and discovered that the levers on the two pumps looked quite different. So I swapped the lever from one of my old pumps into the new pump. It still didn't pump at all, even though I had replaced the diaphragm at the same time, because the old diaphragm is the gasket between the two halves, and I had also discovered that that leaked like a bad shower. So now I have a new top to the pump, and I have a glass bowl bottom, and I have something that doesn't pump at all and doesn't suck. So what am I going to do? It took quite a while, but I eventually, after, after several disassemblies, I also discovered that the length of the shaft on the diaphragm was different by nearly a quarter of an inch, 0 0.020. So that was a problem, and that meant that the lever needed to be up another quarter of an inch in order to actually engage correctly with the camshaft. So here's the process of welding a spacer onto the fuel pump lever so that I can get the diaphragm pumping correctly and get some pressure. I'm going to find some metal that's very tough, not mild steel. And guess what? There's the metal. <laughs> so it's got to be fairly tough. Anyway, you can see the marks that I've got. I'm going to cut that piece out and I'm going to put it on the top of that rubbing block that already exists. I'm going to put it on the top and I'm going to put a tack weld at each end and I'm going to polish it up on the buffer. Here's the, uh, the source of my piece of metal. You'll recognize that as the camshaft thrust plate. And I'm going to put the piece on top of the lever. There's already a little rubbing plate on there, but I'm going to add about a quarter of an inch of thickness to try and get that pump up into the area where the diaphragm is pumping on the push and pull stroke. So here are the two levers side by side. The one in the foreground is the one that was sent to me in the new pump. There's not a chance of it working. In the back are the original levers in the pumps. And so I had extra pumps so I can destroy one if it doesn't work. And it kind of pumps way back there, even with a new diaphragm taken out of the new pump that was sent to me. But I have added this quarter of an inch so that I even get more distance of the lever pushed down before it starts to activate on the lobe on the camshaft. Because if you take your brand new pump, or your old one, there's a bunch of sloppy movement at the beginning that you can feel in your hand and you say, oh yeah, there it is, pumping. No, that's not doing any pumping yet. You take up the slack in the spring or in the linkage and you can hear the pump uh, providing suction and pressure when you get it down further and start to pump it. Up at the top, it's just taking up the slack in all of the linkages. Here's a look 
inside the fuel pump hole in the block and you can see the cam lobe there right now and it's at its lowest point so in other words the lever is in its most relaxed position there the position is probably at its highest or just after the highest position so right now the lobe is at its highest point so it should be pushing on the pump as much as possible so I'm gonna here's my standard fuel pump with the correct lever this this is actually parts of the new pump but it's got the correct lever on it I set it in there and it's just touching at that point. Now I know that there is a little bit of this much slack where the pump doesn't do anything. It's just taking up this space in the I don't know what but anyway so I'm pushing it all the way in and it's doing nothing. So there's absolutely absolutely no pump movement at that point. Really. It just baffles me. Unless there's something that I'm not following inside the pump. So let's see if I can sh do this. Nothing. And then. It's that last little bit of movement that does all the pumping. And it's, the lobe is just not pushing. And the lobe isn't worn out. So that's what I'm trying to solve today by welding on that little quarter inch spacer on the end of the lever. Now I'm gonna take this whole pump apart and carefully look at it again. Maybe there's something I'm missing in the assembly of it where it should be pumping at the beginning of that movement but even another pump that I have never taken apart a newer style pump it does nothing for the first three quarters of an inch and it's only the last little bit of pump movement that does any work I'm going to swap in the new lever but first I'm going to take a look at once again, at how the pump works on the inside. So, speed this up while I take the screws out. So here's the diaphragm. I really see no reason why this should not be working the full stroke. But, take a look here. Here's the first amount of slack. It will never ever do any pumping at that point, no matter where this starts. Hmm. I'm just having some thinking here. So yes we know this isn't going to do anything, but if I assemble the pump And the diaphragm does not get to travel all the way down. Then it would be starting at this point. Then I got nothing. Okay, why do I have nothing? Is it because this is hitting the bottom? Yes, it is. Okay, it's hitting the bottom. So out in the open, the logic is like, oh, there's nothing wrong with your pump. But as soon as you assemble this, it actually is pushing the pump up by about that much. So there we go. Nothing happening. Hard to show. Nothing happening for that amount of time. I'm just going to go get 
the body of the pump that came with this new, the new head. So here's the bottom part that arrived with this top piece. This basically was what came when I ordered it from Rock Auto. So does it go down further? Well, it's going to hit here. So let's just take a measurement. So what I've got is uh, 0.275 of an inch. And what have I got here? Oh, I might say it's 0 0.270, but basically it's the same distance. So that pump is going to go inside the same distance. So it's not that. That's not the reason it's not working. The only other could be the length of the lever. Well, I already measured that one time before and found the new lever to be exactly the same as the old lever. Here are, here are two, oops, uh, yes, they're the right way. So they are virtually identical pieces. So that's not it. That's not the cause of the problem. Now, I already know and I've explained that it seems to me they installed the wrong lever into the new pump. That's a whole different problem. But here's the lever that came with the pump, and here's what should be in the pump. And that one that I just welded up is identical to the one that's in here now. And yet, we just saw when I rotated the camshaft to the highest position for the lobe, it really didn't do anything. So it was playing around like this. The only other thought is that the length of this could be different. So here are two diaphragms off of old pumps. Now let's just check the length. They are both identical. I'm just comparing the two together. They're both identical. So, how does that compare to the new diaphragm? I don't know. I can't test that until I take this apart. So, that's the next step, is to take this apart. this because I know from experience it's going to fly apart. Okay. Oh, by the way, you can you can take this spring out ahead of time, which I forgot to do, and you can put it back in after. You don't have to assemble the, the spring while you're trying to get the lever all in there. Just gonna move this closer. Is that better? Okay. So the pin is not far enough out yet. Is it out now? Nope. Okay, so that's out. Let's just test that. So once again, that is identical to the one that's on the, on the bench here. It's actually, uh, let's see, pivot. There we go. So the two pivot points. Get the angle. Identical, and what's different? Just the piece that I welded on is the only thing that's different. 
can see. And of course, it's different than the, the one that was shipped. So why can't I get the diaphragm out yet? Well, the small lever is still inside. So I'm going to take the needle nose pliers. There it comes. It's not held in by much. See, it's just barely a little snag that catches. Now let's just compare that one. So this one is a new one, the brand new one that was shipped. So here's an old one, been used for 20 years. There's a slight difference to it. So I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm just lining up the holes. I'll squeeze that together. And there's really no difference. It might look a little different, but the, the fulcrum point is exactly in the same position. So there's really no difference. They're all identical. So that's not the cause of any of the problems. Now, the reason why we took this apart is I want to take the diaphragm out. And when I want to compare the length of the shaft of the diaphragm with one of the old ones. Maybe it's different. Now, I'm not just yanking on it. Get some light in here somehow. Uh, because there's a, a, a seal in there, a big diaphragm, that keeps oil from going to this side of the diaphragm. Don't want engine oil or gasoline, because then it's all going to leak out here and that's what happens when you see oil leaking out your pin this diaphragm in here is broken so I'm I gotta take the diaphragm out with it come on there it is whoa boy I hope I can get that back together right okay so there is the shaft 1.435 oh 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 uh oh here's my problem so to the bottom of the diaphragm boy I it's it's nowhere near close okay I'm just telling you that right now and this, these two are the same, but this is not the same as those two. So now I know what the problem is. I just have to figure out how to fix this. This time I'm going to do another measurement, but I'm going to be a little more exact. And I'm going to measure exactly from the diaphragm surface. Which means right where the edge of the diaphragm begins. So it might be a little bit longer. And I'm going to say, uh, I, this distance in here I have to eyeball, so I'm just kind of looking down there. But I'm going to say it is uh, 1. 1.5. Okay, we'll go with that. And this from the diaphragm. Where's the diaphragm in this one? Way over there. Oh my goodness. That's different. Now these these diaphragms are warped from being dry. So I'm, I'm pulling it back a little bit and I'm measuring to where the diaphragm is. And 1.5 is, let's see if I can, uh, where's a good spot? There? No. There. Yeah, I mean, you can almost see the difference, and that's more than a quarter of an inch. That's ooh, okay. So I was 1.5, stretched this vernier out. So now what have I got? 1.725. 1.725. So that, <laughs> that's. What did I say? 1.5 to 1.7. If it was 1.75, that'd be a quarter of an inch. Okay. What did I weld onto this? 
So I welded on slightly less 0.2 and I'm missing 0.5 and it was 1.70, not 1.7. That's exactly how much I need. Ooh, that might be the repair right there. Okay, I need to backtrack. I need to make a comment because I've said that I bought this at Rock Auto. And I've said something is wrong with the pump from Rock Auto, but that may not be true. It could be true that this, no, this rod being slightly shorter makes up for the fact that this lever is different. Could be. Quarter of an inch? Hmm, maybe. Okay. However, my goal is to have a glass bowl on my pump. <laughs> Weird enough as it sounds, my goal is not just to have a pump that works, which, which, bolting on the one they shipped me, it might actually work. But what I want is the look of the original. So I am going to continue assembling the parts that I want with the parts that I've modified and the parts that they sent me. And now I know what I'm looking for in the assembly. I know what I'm looking for to solve the problem that occurs because of swapping parts around. So, yeah, okay. That makes me extremely happy, well, much happier than I used to be, on account of I know what the problem is now. If you don't know what the problem is, it's very hard to fix. So I've got this assembled, but I'm holding it, uh, which is not good because I know from two or three times experience, there's no way that I can hold all this together. So this shot, I need to show you in a different position. I've got it in the vise because I'm using the vise to hold the diaphragm in place while I insert this small inner lever. Okay, it goes in like... It's in there. I pushed it down. That hook went inside of the loop on the um, diaphragm. Now I need to insert the main pump lever and the pin needs to be tapped back in but the pin needs to go through this lever and that inner lever and then come back out so all of this has to line up oh that's good so I've got a drill bit and the drill bit is slightly smaller than the hole so it's not causing damage it's pointed at the end so it kind of allows the alignment a little better I guess and I'm going to be tapping again okay I think I can take the drill bit out okay and I'm going to squeeze now on the diaphragm and I'm going to loosen the vise okay and I'm now holding it holding the diaphragm with my thumb and I think that the pin is through just far enough that now I can support the housing of the pump on the vise and tap the pin in. Okay, that's much nicer. There it goes. It's not really tight. Okay. So, what have I got? Okay, can I let that up? 
Yes, I can. Okay. So I have, I'm looking inside here to see if everything still looks assembled. Yeah, it does actually. And springs in. Diaphragm inside looks like it's some kind of a seal. And now I'm just going to move this back and forth. So what we've got is a pump. There's the slack in the system. Of course, there's no spring in there yet. Okay, so it's assembled. Now I'm going to go back to my other table where there's a little bit more light. My next step would be to put the spring in here. So let's see if I can so put it in the bottom first, I guess. Take my needle nose. And put it underneath. There we go. Done. It's amazing how that stays in there. So there's the slack at the beginning. It's doing absolutely nothing. Got more height. Okay. Nice. Okay. Time to assemble on my bottom that I do want. So this is going to go here. Why? Uh, because that's the way the fuel line comes out. And the inlet is at the front. So make sure it's in that position. Squeeze down and put in a couple of screws. Am I missing something? It went together so easily. Okay, it's all back together. Will it work? Okay, so let's just play with this a little bit. So again, we've got this massive amount of slack at the beginning that does nothing. And it only starts... <laughs> wow. That's the only place that it works, that it does any, any benefit. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the vehicle and I'm going to check it. So we left the vehicle in the high position for the cam lobe. So the thing I'm thinking about now is if this thickness is too thick, which I doubt it, but if it was too thick, then the pump would hit the bottom. It would bottom out every time. Let's crank this over. Oh wow, look at that. That's pretty good. Um, it's actually working. So, now I'm going to keep pumping because on the carburetor end I have a hose and I'm going to see if any fuel comes out. There, we now have fuel. That's fuel. So I was really happy that I got some pressure and I got some vacuum with this new modification. However, this gasket seemed to be leaking. Now, why is all of this contraption on here? Because of the bowl. So if you don't have that, then it looks like this. This is the new style. And this cover just goes on with a seal. We have a nice flexible piece of rubber and we have a piece of rubber that is probably not as flexible as it should be because it's getting old and it's not sealing. This is all held on by one screw, one screw. So my thought is that I can use this piece of thin rubber put it in between 
but use a paper punch or my hole punches and punch holes in it so that it will allow the fuel to go through the bowl filter so it goes in this connection comes out through the center here goes down into the bowl then it's supposed to go back up through the screen into this center piece here and then travels to the pump so it takes a little longer trip in order to get to the pumping section so it actually sucks the fuel into the pump all the way through the filter before it ever gets to the pressurizing so that's my goal uh, if i do that then i really have ruined this and I can't go back to this housing. So I have to use the bowl, glass bowl method. So there's the one I want. Here's the one that I don't want. But this is my pattern. And here are my hole punch methods. So I'm gonna set the uh, rubber on something solid piece of solid hardwood and I'm gonna poke some holes and see what happens and by the magic of television <laughs> there we go it looks like it's gonna work just as long as it seals around the edge of that too okay I'm gonna put it together and see what happens again installing this fuel pump is getting to be a bit like brushing your teeth after a few times doing it, you can do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> oh, I'm getting tired of putting this thing on and off. Anyway, we're gonna try it again. So, I think I am ready. And we've got to... Uh... full so let's see if it leaks now which is what it did last time oh well that's drier than it's ever been could have success okay this carb I've got a kit a rebuild kit arriving for it today supposedly so that would be my next step is to take the carb apart again this time put all new gaskets and a new pump in there because the pump's not working. To be expected. <laughs> 